Hey, welcome back to Spirit Music Meetups. Mike Burris here. We need some supermen to stand up and being courageous. Uh, it's very, there's a lot of people getting bought out and uh, wish the bank accounts could all be opened up. But we're looking at an old vision and it was a confirmation. It was in uh, November, I'm sorry, December 10th, 2020. And I'm going to read from that page. Confirmations in the sky of coming glory, but not the way we expect. You know, we just have such limited vision. But if we could see what God sees, if we could see like God sees, we would be blown away. We would be blown away. You know, I've been writing a lot about Zechariah 4, 6 on the Might and Power page, which talks about how radical the new covenant was going to be distinct from the old covenant. It was no longer, in fact, going to be by might and power, which are Hebrew words for the external resources and internal abilities of man, but that it would be completely different in kind, new, chadash, in that it's not new in time, but completely different in kind, unprecedented, and never been before used, cannot borrow from that invention and get a patent. And that is because it would be totally 100% by my spirit, says the Lord. And so go look at the uh, links there, New Covenant. Go to the page. The links are on the page, not in the, the description on this video. You get so much more on the page. And you're free uh, to talk on the bottom of the page. Very free. Now I'm wondering if that's where we're at now. That the old way of doing things that we've been doing for a long time in America is now proven to be an utter failure. Boy, haven't we seen, you know, I'm making this video now. We've seen one utter failure after another. Got to get closer to the video here. So, and there's no other way out of this complete destruction. There seems to be a complete destruction going on of our economy and everything, of the republic. And a complete breakdown into uh, complete lawlessness. Everybody's talking about it with Antifa and BLM anarchy. Now we know that eventually comes because of many prophecies, particularly about the lawlessness that we see in 1st and 2nd Thessalonians and the book of Revelation and what Jesus said in Matthew 24, but it is too soon because other things must happen and they have not happened before that final demise occurs. So that's when the Antichrist is revealed. So there's, it seems like there is a spirit of lawlessness that is brewing in, in the United States and particularly in the United States, and also in the world. Now, I'm wondering if that's what's happening. So that leaves just one option. The Lord is going to do a radically new thing that is completely illogical and not based on man's might and power, and will be so supernatural that we're all left scratching our heads, just like the Jews at the Red Sea that Moses parts near their imminent death. Yeah, I mean, they were about to be extinguished. And then God comes in at the last hour. I don't like this. This shirt is so baggy. You know, anyway, I like this shirt. It's comfortable. So I don't think any of us have a clue what that will be, just like they had no clue what it would be, only that they were given a promise from God that they would be saved and somehow the Red Sea was going to part, but it has not parted yet. And apparently that's where we're at, and I think we're still there. We're in the ocean up to our necks, ready to drown, waiting and waiting and waiting, crying out to God for truth and justice, crying out for God to intervene. We're not there quite yet. And if he does not intervene, then all the prophets were wrong, and everything about Christianity is down the tubes, because thousands of people now have seen this, and there will indeed be a great falling away, but all for, all for the wrong reasons, because we put our hope and our prayers in the Lord. 
That's not why the falling away occurs in New Testament prophecy. That is for sure. So, yeah, you got to look at context. And we're not quite up to our necks drowning yet. We're getting close to drowning, but we're not quite there. And at certain times, it looks like we are there. But then it gets worse. And a lot of people are talking about the worst is yet to come. Concerning, and there is... Um, there's some, there's different, well, should I read this? There's a lot of people that have insider knowledge. We know that. <laughs> people are trading. Politicians are trading. The SEC is not, they have inside knowledge, and they're making a killing. Politicians are, you know. So, and the SEC is not stopping them. But they stopped Martha Stewart. There's also people that have connections in the military, that have intel. It's all secretive. And sometimes they let some of this information out and we get all excited. But they're talking about great light coming. And I saw it in January, a great light is coming. But I thought it was going to come in January. And, you know... We've seen a lot of darkness. We just keep seeing more and more darkness. And it gets very dark. So in history of revival, you find out that the Holy Spirit breaks out in a big way after the society hits the rock bottom. But you don't really know it's rock bottom. It's like trading stocks. Nobody really knows for sure it's the rock bottom. Like right now, our stock market is getting close to being at a rock bottom. And... You know, this might be the rock bottom, but uh, some people are saying, nope, it's going to be tested. That, that bottom is going to be tested. And so it could just collapse. The economy could just really collapse. The stock market could seriously collapse, At, like it did in the Great Depression. And as I was writing this on this, my wife called me because there was a gigantic pink cloud above her and I saw this the other day right after getting a revelation I love this and it's actually much pinker this is a sign of great glory coming how do I know it's it's mostly on the horizon but it's spreading across the sky and this is a very clear message that in this great darkness that there is a message that is not going that, that, that it is not going to last. So there is going to be a great darkness. When is it the darkest? I just said this today. Interesting. When is it the darkest? It's darkest right before the sun comes up in the morning. But you don't know it. You don't know how long that darkness, unless you have astronomical, you know, you know the, you know the sunrise. You know information. You, you know God's information. So I on this... Link, you can see this really massively bright star, bright cloud. But I want you to see something very unusual about it. These pink clouds happen many times in January. They have. It's in January. I was just blown away. And I would have, a, I, I don't think much about clouds, but when I saw them, I got filled with the Holy Spirit. That's how I know they were signs from God. I wasn't looking for something to get excited about. I don't get excited. Um, I know it's hard to believe, but I get excited doing these videos. But I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I've never seen anything like that in my life. Every time I witnessed them, I could feel the Lord saying, Great glory was coming. A giant cross formed in the sky. I'm like, how did this possibly... It's like a giant T, an upside-down cross. It's like, it's impossible. You can't have clouds form a cross, a T, in the sky. I'm like, how is this happening? And it was bright pink. Then I saw a door open in the heavens, shaped like a funnel in the middle of this picture. Go look at that. It was like a door opening in the clouds. And it was expanding what was coming out of the door. 
See how the horde of light patches are spreading out from the door in both directions? I was like, what? It came right out of that cloud, these, these patches. Now the swarm is spreading even more. It's like a swarm. It's like a swarm of locusts. Glory, glory, glory. Spread your glory, Lord. And I was like, I can feel it. The conclusion, a lot of people don't read the oral Torah, the Jewish oral Torah. But it is much more descriptive of the written Torah than the five books, which are the five books of Moses. Because the five books of Moses are considered memory points by the rabbis, written phrases to help the Jews remember the rest of the story, which was told for centuries and eventually written down. The Mishnah says that when, and that this is the Mishnah, the writing down of that oral Torah, says that when the millions of Jews were up against the Red Sea, God told them that Moses was going to hold up the staff and that the sea would part and that's what we read in the written Torah, Tanakh. However, the rest of the story is God had Moses raise his staff up and nothing happened. And there was a lot of grave doubt as they saw the dust clouds of the armies coming closer and closer from Egypt. So eventually the people were in a panic and they had to start wading out into the water. Their stuff was floating away, nobody drowned, but there was a great fear that that was going to happen eminently. And people were up to their necks in water, and there were people holding Moses' arms up because this went on for quite a long time as the dust clouds got closer and they were crying out to the Lord. They were absolutely crying out for God to intervene, and it didn't look like there was really any hope. But they only had one direction they could go, and that was into the water. I believe we're seeing more as I make this video. We have not got to the point. The church hasn't even got to that point. God's people haven't even got to that point, where we're absolutely desperately crying because of so much fear and so much pain and suffering. We're, we're getting there. But we're not there. We are not down on our knees. He says, if my people will get down on their knees. That is a place of desperation. That's obedience. That's submission to God. I mean, I don't get down on my knees enough because I don't have the fear, right? I don't see what's going on. I feel too comfortable. They were crying out to God and the captains, Caleb, and Joshua were rallying the people to have faith in God down to the last minute. And suddenly the waters part, but it was down to the last minute. That's God is a last minute God. So you know it's, it's a miracle. It's supernatural. Then the absolute impossible occurs as they are literally running across the strait, leaving things behind, running for their lives. And they get across just in time as the soldiers in the chariots get very close to them. And then God closes up the waters and they're all drowned. All the horses and all the chariots and a huge army all swallowed up in water. And not one Jewish person was lost. Not one. Now that's the adrenaline rush <laughs> way that God does things. And you'll see that all through the battles... Of Israel absolutely insane odds that they should have any success and suddenly they have enormous success and it's truly irrational and illogical even the last one that made them a nation in 1967 or whatever everybody's baffled to this day it's like they should have they should have been pushed out Israel she was surrounded by these Muslim nations that were gonna put them right into the ocean and they lost all the Muslim nations. All of a sudden, they lost. And Israel was declared a nation in one day. That's biblical prophecy. And all the other biblical prophecy starts occurring after that one occurs. That was all laid out in God's timetable. And But all declared a nation by all the world in one day. As I was posting this on 3.1.21, I'm just amazed how 
much the Lord calls for, for faith from us. He gives us such powerful promises and experiences of him, but we rarely see them come true very soon or in the way we think they will happen. I've seen them come true in, a, in a, like a month, but this is just really dragging out, which really takes a lot of patience and trust. He's really trying to see how much faith you have, but it really is trying to get people on their knees. It's always such a surprise and often down to the wire when most mortal men have lost hope. I still believe the Lord is not done. He's not done with Trump and not done with his judgment of the things that have gone on. Not done. God's, God is not done. And how the media and big tech have got involved and how the court systems have been corrupted. The co-equal branches of government have been dissolved. I believe America, even the churches, will suffer greatly at the hands of what has occurred. Greatly. Because they allowed the sin to go on. There's so many judgments in Israel and the nations around Israel because of allowing profound sin to go on. Lies and deception, deceit, theft, killing, murder. Uh, wow, so much going on. So much going on. You think God's going to just overlook it? Nations have come and gone. Whew, he just judges them. But in their utter despair, great repentance. And then revival will come. So there are some great books on the history of revival and how at the very bottom, people are so wiped out, so wiped out from their sin, so repentant, so crying out that finally a massive revival will come. Holy Spirit is just, just comes down like a shower. I can't wait to see what you guys say. You might want to read my link. It gives you all the details I can't really talk about. Because on different platforms, there's different rules. Can't keep track of all these rules for all these different platforms, man. So I'm just being erring on the side of caution. Because I want you to be uh, encouraged. And you can go get the truth. The ones who want to know the truth will really seek the truth. They will really look for the truth. They won't believe everything that is said to them on the mainstream media. They're not going to believe it. You know, P.T. Barnum says there is a sucker born every minute. The, the original carny, con artist, <laughs> carnival con artist. And, um, you know, every socialistic and, uh, Dem socialistic and Hitler, Democratic Socialistic Party, and the Communist Parties, they all use propaganda, and they use the mass media to do that. They use the educational system, too. So, I mean, this is a standard operating um, manual for evil to spread across the world. But a lot of these things have been defeated, haven't they? They've been defeated. But at the peril of many, millions of people have died because they believed the lie. It says there's a great delusion, a strong delusion that's being sent out. Satan, God is allowing the deceiver of the world, the nations, because he is going to get his plan. He's got a weed. He's got a weed out, right? There's a big weeding out. He's going to gather at the harvest his his plants, right? His fruit. His plants and all the weeds and all those other plants, they're thrown into judgment. They're thrown into the lake of fire. But he's, he's bringing all this out, right? He's letting the weeds grow up and even choke out some of the plants. It's all wake-up call. It's all to waken us up, right? They talk about being woke. But the woke people are really quite asleep. They are quite asleep, but they just don't know it because they're in deception. They don't really look for the truth. And so, because they don't have a love for the truth, it says a strong delusion will come to drag them away and to 
into their destiny, which is the judgment in the lake of fire. All liars. Go look at Revelation 21, 8. Revelation 21, 8. Just came into my mind. But as for the cowardly, these are people who do not want to fight the good fight of faith. They don't want to find the truth. They don't, they're cowardly. They're faithless. They are detestable. There's a lot of detestable things going on. They, they are living as murderers. They are practicing sexual immorality. They're, they are sexually immoral. immoral. Uh, they're sorcerers. There's a lot of demonic stuff going on. There's idolaters. They, they worship idols all over the world. And all liars. Oh, there's a lot of liar lying going on now. Ooh, they are liars. This is what they do. Their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire everlasting. And this is the second death. You know, they're going to die, but then they're going to face judgment. And then they're going to get the second death. That's an eternal lake of fire. A terrible, terrible suffering. That was created, it says, for immortal beings, which were the angels that left the proper domain. And bred with the daughters of men and created giants, Nephilim, great men, a warrior like Hercules, Cyclops, that the earth had to be destroyed. There was 8,000 of them and spread so much evil that the earth had to be destroyed by in Noah's flood. And that a third of the angels, billions of angels, have left, rebelled against God, followed Satan, the whisperer, the backbiter, that's what it means, the devil, the slanderer, who was slandering God, who was whispering in dark corners, creating a mutiny, right? Treason. And this is how God deals with him. But all those who will not follow, who are not written in the Lamb's book of life, they, they refuse the real Messiah. They're following him, Satan, the devil. Because they refuse the real Messiah. The only way out is to get in the Lamb's book of life, having your sins completely forgiven. Well, I cannot wait to hear from you, so put your comments down below, okay? God bless. Bye-bye.